What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's tutorial I'm going to be talking about dimensions and not only dimensions, I'm going to be talking about setting up the dimension styles, uh, just everything you have to do in AutoCAD to make your perfect dimensions. Of course, you need to do that in Revit as well. So I'm just going to be showing you how to set up all of those dimensions. But before we get started, I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial. It helps me out a lot. And if you haven't already, I suggest you subscribe because I make tutorials like this every day. And follow me on social media as well. I post there also. Okay, so here I am in Revit, and this is the project that I've been doing uh, a while back. So this is uh, just a studio apartment project that I designed, and uh, this is just something that I'm going to be using as a template to set up all of the dimensions. Now, I'm not going to talk all that much about placing dimensions, of course. I'm just going to mention a, a few little options, but if you want to get a more extensive tutorial on that, I already have that, so check that uh, video out. Uh, the link is in the description of this tutorial. Okay, so let's get started. So, uh, to place dimensions, you can either go here to the annotation tab and uh, just use some of these uh, dimension tools, or also you can go and basically select one of these elements and here you get these temporary dimensions. These, uh, as you probably know, are designed to help you determine or help you uh, move uh, the objects and then uh, it either shows you how to uh, the distances or it helps you like you can go uh, go in directly and just type in the, the distance you want to have but as soon as you deselect the element uh, that dimension is gone so let me select it again and now if I hit this button over here as you can see it uh, this uh, little uh, window appears and it says make it a temp uh, make it a temp temporary dimension permanent so if I go there and select that as you can see this now becomes a permanent dimension now this number is smaller because this wall is still selected but if I deselect it as you can see this is now a permanent normal regular dimension and I can just move it up like this and I'll leave it there uh, but anyway let's go into uh, just the basic setup of the dimension and here are these uh, five dots that you have on these dimensions and what do they do so first let's start off with these uh, middle line dots so these help you uh, determine the placing of the dimension so currently this is placed on the inner side of this exterior wall and this is on the inter inner side of this uh, interior wall and if you want to flip those around you can just go here and uh, just a tap or just select this little dot and as you can see it moves it to the next position so now it's here so you just double click it just double click it now it's on the outside face now you double click it and now it's on the middle one or on the core center line uh, so basically as you can see that's this line over here the center of this wall so you can basically play around like that and flip it around or you can select it and perhaps move it somewhere else like this door perhaps or wherever you think that dimension should be placed so let's just leave it yeah as you can see here this blue line appears so if I hit tab I can uh, select different lines of this wall so let's select the exterior dimension for example and you can do the same thing over here so you just click on this line or double click on that line and it will change the placement of that dimension uh, but anyway so we've got a few more so we've got these little dots over here and they basically determine the uh, length of this dimension now there's a, another way to do this through the uh, edit type dialog and I'm going to be showing you that a bit later but as you can see here you can just set it up in a way that works for you and as you can see you can make them uh, different sizes the left one and the right one or of course if you go and move this uh, it will be uh, you can make it kind of the same the same dimension but anyway so we have that and we have this one over here so this is just drag text dimension and this is mostly if you have some uh, maybe overlapping dimensions and then you can move this out of the way but the annoying part is you get this uh, little line that I don't really like but you can of course turn it off over here uh, in the info tab so just uh, this leader uh, checkpoint and you can just uncheck it or you can go here in the properties panel and just uncheck that leader and it will 
make this thing disappear but anyway you can play around you can move it wherever you want but if you move it too far away then I suggest you keep the leader because then it will just so it makes sense but if you just move it kind of to the side this doesn't really make sense you don't need to have it so just I just like to keep it off in these kinds of situations but anyway let's uh, let's delete this uh, dimension and let's go here to aligned uh, dimensions let's use uh, wall faces and here for pick uh, let's go with individual references and uh, let's just go kind of like this and select all of these things perhaps the door and this outside part okay and let's do one that kind of does the whole whole wall okay so we've got these dimensions and as you can see this is what they look the scale is 1 to 100 and of course you can move it to some different scale but let's leave it at 1 to 100 uh, uh, now something that you're going to be noticing as well first let's change this perhaps yeah let's delete this dimension this is too too, too many numbers maybe we can uh, do it with a bit less so let's go yeah let's just do the door maybe it's, and the uh, exterior walls yeah like that it looks nicer but anyway so this is what we have and uh, let's just make some changes and edit this uh, dimension type uh, so usually when I print uh, all of these uh, drawings the dimensions seem too large uh, when I was working in AutoCAD I uh, usually made the text uh, 2 millimeters or even less 1.8 and the uh, default setting as you can see here is uh, 2.5 millimeters and if we open up the drop menu pretty much all of them are 2.5 2.5 2.5 so uh, let's change that first I think that's the that's the annoying part so you can make the text smaller and then you can play around with uh, the, the rest of the dimension and kind of set it up in a way that works for you so uh, let's just go over here uh, select the dimension go into edit type and what I suggest you do you don't change anything until you create a new type so go here to duplicate and then let's call this diagonal yeah let's just call this new just to know what we have and, and now let's start editing so let me just maybe move this out of the way just a little bit so I can uh, demonstrate on here what I'm changing so let's start from the top and just go all the way to the bottom so let's start here from the dimension string type yeah you can make it continuous I suggest you uh, leave this off like this and the leader type arc or it can be a line that's just uh, if I just go here okay and if I move this out of the way it just makes it a straight line I, I prefer the arc so let's just leave that back as an arc but you get the point so that's that's what you have uh, okay uh, moving on uh, next uh, leader tick mark you can add an arrow over there again I don't think that's uh, that's necessary then for the tick mark that's the important one so that's th this here uh, diagonal line as you can see here it says diagonal three millimeter and you can change it you can make it a filled dot three millimeter so it looks like that it looks really ugly or let's go back to diagonal three millimeter hit apply and here you can change the uh, the thickness of that so tick mark uh, weight uh, line weight so you can change that if it's too thick you can maybe go with three and as you can see it makes it a bit thinner uh, but I actually prefer to have it uh, thicker uh, but the problem is uh, you can't really change the size of it uh, and uh, usually it's too large uh, especially when we make the number smaller it will seem too large and whenever you go to this dialog you can change it so how do you change this number how do you change this three millimeter number I want to keep the diagonal I want it to be uh, the weight of four but they want it to be shorter so how do you do that uh, well you can't do it through this uh, type of properties dialog you have to go here apply okay and then uh, find the manage tab you go to additional settings you open this up and here you will get this arrowheads now these tick marks are uh, basically categorized as arrowheads so if I just open up this uh, dialog I can actually go into the menu straight and uh, change these so if I find this uh, diagonal three millimeter oops diagonal three millimeter as you can see here it says uh, tick size and if I just go here and hit delete make it two millimeter hit OK and as you can see now it's changed so 
that's just uh, one of those things that you have to really know where they are so you just go to manage additional settings and that's how you change that arrow type so uh, let's just bring this back okay so let's go back into the edit type dialog for our new dimension type so we've set that up then you have the uh, uh, this uh, dimension align extension so if I uh, make this, I don't know, six millimeters and hit apply. As you can see, this is the dimension that changed. So that's this here extension. And again, it's at 2.4. I prefer it to leave it at two millimeters. Then uh, let's go to witness line control. So that's basically this line that goes uh, directly from the place that you selected, in this case, this wall, all the way up to your uh, dimension. So I like to change that. Uh, I don't like it going straight to the dimension, even I can, even though I can manually change that. I prefer to go over here and just type in fixed to uh, dimension line, hit apply, and as you can see now this is fixed to the dimension line. And let's hit OK. And now if we select this thing, as you can see it still goes straight to the dimension, but if we change this to uh, diagonal 2.5 millimeter new, as you can see now it will be over here and again you can change it uh, if necessary but uh, it's good I like the the default where it's like straight to the dimension okay let's go now back uh, into edit type uh, continue going and here for the witness line the length it's at 2.4 uh, so that's this extension over here and again I don't like that I like to make it a bit larger because uh, I like to keep it the same size over here these two but this one I like to have it a, a bit longer so it can kind of show better where it's uh, what is it dimensioning so uh, for that one uh, let's go okay that's witness line uh, yeah, uh, let's go with something like, I don't know, four millimeter, let's see. Yeah, I think it looks a, a bit better. And for the witness line uh, extension here, let's change this to maybe one millimeter, just to see what that is. And as you can see, that's this one, the top one. And actually I like to keep it at, I don't know, something like 1.5, let's see. Yeah, that looks better, maybe two millimeter, yeah. Let's be generous, two millimeter. Yeah, that's that, that looks aesthetic. Okay, so the tick mark, we don't need that. Uh, we can pretty much skip uh, these uh, for the center line pattern. You don't want to have a pattern lined uh, for the dimension. You want to have a solid line. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's it for this. But uh, also the color is important. So uh, for the color, let's go. And I like to keep my dimensions a bit gray. So if I hit apply, as you can see now, they're a bit grayer. I like my uh, model or my drawing, my floor plan to pop up out from the drawing and then to keep the dimension lines a bit kind of in the background and that's why I uh, use the gray. And here for the dimension line snap distance, that's uh, when you zoom in and you want to kind of snap it. If you're 10 millimeters away or one centimeter, it will snap. And I suggest you keep that snap as is. Now for the text, uh, these are all the settings for the text that we have. Uh, now for the width factor, I suggest you never change this. And as you can see, if I type in here 1.5, hit apply, it does this, it looks really ugly, it's unnecessary, so just keep that at one. Next, uh, we have an option to underline the text, so you get this, or to make it italic, so it looks like that, or to make it even bold, and that's what we have. Again, I prefer not to use these, but if you want, that's where they are. Uh, next thing for the text size, this is the important part here, I like to use 1.8. Uh, that's just what I found that works for me for most projects. And for the text offset, uh, let's just use one millimeter. So it's, or maybe 0.8. Yeah, I like to be closer to the, to the dimension. It looks a bit nicer. Uh, uh, now for the text font, of course, this is something I change all the time. So uh, I don't like Arial. I prefer using Century Gothic. So let's just search for that. Here it is. Oops. Okay, hit apply, and as you can see now, the font has changed. Then we have this text background. Uh, now, what does that mean? So now it says opaque, and if I open up the drop menu, it can say transparent. So if I just go here and hit uh, okay, and if I uh, choose this dimension and move it a bit down over here, as you can see, uh, whenever it encounters 
some element in the background, uh, you will get this white uh, background. That's why it says opaque. But if I go and now and select this, go into edit type and uh, let's see where is that. Yeah, and go here and change this from opaque to transparent and hit apply. This is what you get. So it looks, uh, it's kind of, it's not that visible. Now, in this case, because I used a gray, it uh, you can actually read the dimension. But if you're using black on black, it's going to be impossible to read. So uh, that's why you have that, that option to have that uh, opaque uh, background. So hit apply and let's just move it back where it should be. Okay, uh, let's continue on. So select the dimension, go into edit type and let's scroll down a bit. And yeah, now we have the uh, units format. And if I open this uh, menu up, as you can see, now we have the same uh, formats for project units, uh, but it's all grayed out because uh, we have here checked use project units. Now, this is something that I don't prefer to do. I prefer actually to uncheck this and use here centimeters uh, without any decimal places and uh, just hit OK, apply, OK. And if I go here to UN for project units and let's just change this to meters with two decimal units. This is just something I prefer for designing. I prefer to design in uh, meters and uh, for the dimensions, uh, well, uh, every architecture firm needs to use uh, centimeters for dimensioning their projects. So uh, that's why when I go here, and here I set it up at, uh, I don't set it at use project units, I set up the centimeters. And if I would go here and check use project units, hit OK, apply, now you get this dot because now this is in meters instead of centimeters. So just uncheck that and keep it at centimeters with zero decimal places. Hit OK, apply, and now it looks good. And I can design in the units I want to have and or in, in the, the units I feel comfortable. And I can get the dimensions in the units that, uh, well, that are right for the project. And uh, moving down, you have, uh, well, that's pretty much all you need to know about the setup. You have these other options, which are uh, equality text. So when you have two dimensions that you make equal, it says that EQ, but you can change that text. Maybe you can type in equal or something, but I suggest you don't really change any of this. It's, uh, it's more for the design process than it is for presentation. And you don't want to, you don't want to make changes there. So just hit OK, and this is what we have in the end. So that's how you set up your uh, dimensions in Revit. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, and share this video. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day.